Hey, this is Father Robert from GadgetAtTheTechStop.net. You know the place where it's always time to get your geek on. We're here at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center for Interop Las Vegas 2010. We're furiously setting up our gear, but we're not so busy that we can't stop to give you some gadget goodness. Now, I'm here with the ever-present Mr. Deal Allen from Fluke Networks, who has written a book, Network Maintenance and Troubleshooting Guide, that tells you everything you ever wanted to know, and a lot of things that you didn't, about networking. Now, Neil, we're going to start with something kind of basic for Interop Makes You Smarter, and that is the, diff the difference between a hub and a switch, and who hears what kind of packets. Now, you've set up some kind of scenario here. Tell me a little bit about it. All right. We have here a situation you might find under your desk at work, where you've got somebody that's plugged hubs in, connecting to your switches. You'd like to think you don't have hubs anymore, but they're out there. They're still there. So, a hub could be looked upon as a multi-port repeater. The switch, depending on its feature set, so we're going to focus on a switch being a layer two device for this discussion. A switch could be looked upon as being a multi-port bridge and the behavior that's handled by that. Now on an ethernet network, a switch typically acts as a transparent bridge, meaning it's going to do all the work to figure out where the machine is that you're trying to talk to. Mm -hmm. And it figures it out by registering the MAC addresses those little, you know, those numbers that are attached to your Ethernet adapter, that tells it where that particular PC is. Now, now in the scenario, something happens. All right. So to begin with, for the scenario, we're going to assume that we've already taken care of everything that needs to happen. It's working. Each of the PCs has spoken with all of the other PCs, so they all know everybody, and everything's going on, and everything's been moving along just fine. Then I uh, trip over the power cord, reboot the switch, and it now knows nothing about the attached network. So all those MAC addresses, gone. Gone. Gone, okay. Now, in your scenario, you give us four packets. These aren't conversations, these are individual packets, right? right? So don't make assumptions about anything else that might have taken place. Right. Only these four. So all we know is we've got PC1 and PC2 on one hub, which are connected to another hub through a switch, and that other hub has PC3 and PC4. That's correct. Okay. So First scenario here. After we reboot the switch and it comes back up and it's ready to go, no traffic has been on the network except this first train. So PC1 would like to send a request to PC2. So the repeater, the hub, always transmits every received anything to all ports except the port it received it on. Mm -hmm. Therefore, where will that packet go? Well, let's stop and let the kids at home play along. So get your little chart, your little diagram here. You're going to fill in the answers. PC1 sending to PC2 through this hub, through that switch, through that other hub. Who knows? Which PC is here? Got your answer? OK. Now I'm saying PC1 sends it into the hub, which is a repeater. So it's going to repeat to every port except the port that it received it from. That means PC2 hears it. It means the switch hears it. And uh, a funny thing's going to happen at the switch, right? That's correct. The switch is going to trust only the source address mm -hmm. because it knows it came from that particular machine. So the switch, the bridge, is going to record the source address in a table and associate that with a particular interface. So in this case, the source of that packet is PC1. So it's going to record PC1 for interface 1. It will then look at the destination address in that original packet, the first one on the wire, which is PC2. Since there is no record of PC2 in the bridge forwarding table, because the memory cleared, because I tripped over the power, mm -hmm. it's going to have no alternative except to flood it to all the other ports except the port that it came in on. It would be bad to send it back out. So when in this instance, because it's completely clear, the switch is acting kind of like the hub. Very much so. Yeah. So. It goes up here, and even though I'm talking to the PC here that's on the same hub, since the switch doesn't know where PC2 is, it's going to send it out to the second hub. And since the second hub is just a repeater, that means PC3 and PC4 are going to hear it as well. That's correct. Very good. Second scenario. Second packet. So PC2, PC2 is going to answer the query PC1 made. It's only the second packet since I reset the switch. So a little different. it's plugged into the repeater. Mm -hmm. So where does the answer, or where does the packet go? Repeats to every port except the port that it came from. So PC1 will hear it. And then the switch will come up here, and it will look at the source. It will look at the destination, and what will it see? Well, first it's going to record the source address, because it trusts the source address. So it'll make a record now saying, 
I've observed PC2 on that interface. Then it's going to decide what to do with that packet. And lo and behold, packet says the destination is PC1, and in fact, PC1 resides on the same interface of that switch. Because so the it was switch the previous packet. assumes that since they're both on the same interface, PC1 has already heard the packet, has absolutely nothing to do, and it drops it. So second packet, only PC1 will hear it. You got that, right? Easy. OK, let's move to the next one. All right. PC1 now wants to talk to PC3. Where does the packet go? Well, it's going to leave PC1. It's going to go into the hub. It's going to get shot out to all the ports except the one that came from, which means PC2 hears it. Then it's going to go to the switch. And the switch, not knowing where that PC is, because it's not yet recorded in memory, is going to shoot it out all ports. Except the port it came, it in came from. It's going to go down into this hub, which, again, all it does is repeat to every port except the one it came from, which means PC3 and 4 will hear. Very good. So when that packet went through, who is the source address for that packet? Well, PC1. PC1 is in the table already, so we've already recorded it. The switch doesn't have any extra work to do. Last packet in our exercise, we're going to go from PC3 to PC4. Now, on the previous packet, we already spoke to PC3. Does the switch know about it? Well, it doesn't trust the destination address. So when PC3 tries to talk to PC4, where does it go? Well, first it's going to go to PC4, because it's going into the hub, which gets repeated out to all ports. It's also going to go to the switch. The, PC, the switch is now going to record the address of PC3, because now it has the source map. And what have we said about the switch, what the switch will do when it doesn't really know the destination? Because it hasn't heard from PC4 yet. That's correct. So it's going to blast it's going to it out. flood it to all the other ports except the port it came in on. Mm -hmm. Which means it's going to get to the hub, which will then be repeated, and PC1 and PC2 will hear it as well. Now, hopefully, your chart looks like this. If it doesn't, then you're probably going to need to pick up Neil Allen's book. That's Network Maintenance and Troubleshooting Guide. It's available from Addison Wesley. You could pick it up at Amazon online in a bookstore, or you could just come to Interop Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center here now and talk to Neil Allen himself. He'll be in the knock. Come on, stop by. I'm sure he'll sign your copy of the book. <laughs> in any case, again, we're showing you that Interop makes you smarter. Neil, thank you very much for coming on thank online. You. Come to Interop and remember, there's no Uber geek without you.